Hello, and welcome to today's Your Daily Five. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and I'm happy to join you on this Friday, August 4th. Um, first thing I want to do, for those of you who are new to Earnings Beats, just want to let you know we do have a free newsletter, our Earnings Beats Digest. If you go over to EarningsBeats.com, scroll down, you'll see an area where you can enter your name, email address, hit that subscribe button. We have a newsletter that goes out three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. It's a very, very brief read, normally just a couple of paragraphs in a chart. Uh, there's no credit card required, and you can unsubscribe at any time. We'd love to have you. I can tell you that today uh, we sent out a uh, our uh, newsletter featuring Wayfair. Uh, Wayfair is a stock that has about 32% of its float short, very, very heavily shorted stock. They came out with their earnings, uh, which were better than expected, and the stock shot up. But this is a company that has been going up uh, for the last three months. In fact, it's risen um, 125% over the last three months. And that's the sixth best stock on our short squeeze chart list, which currently has 42 companies on it. So there've been five others that have done even better than Wayfair. Um, and occasionally I do write about these uh, short squeeze stocks. That's one of the things uh, that I do like to write about. I think uh, you need that kind of information in today's market. Uh, but anyway, sign up, name, email address, hit that subscribe button. You'll get articles like the one I wrote today on Wayfair. We'd love to have you. Anytime we have any free events, we reach out to our Earnings Beats Digest community. So this is a group, this is a newsletter that you really want to be a part of. Uh, also, if you want to try our paid service and get what I think is the best market guidance out there anywhere, hit this button right here, start your no-cost trial. It's a 30-day free trial. We'd love to have you. All right, so today, what I'm doing for uh, today's Your Daily Five is, you know, based, obviously, our name is Earnings Beats. And that's what we do when earnings season kicks in. This is when we do a lot of our research, trying to dig in, find some of the best companies. And so we keep a strong earnings chart list, which is a chart list of companies that have beaten Wall Street estimates, top line and bottom line, in their last quarter. Um, it stays on there until they come up for their next earnings report. We take them off. And then if they do it again, they go right back on there. So it's just this revolving... Uh, door kind of a chart list that every 90 days turns over and you're always working with companies that have beaten top and bottom line. My background as a practicing CPA for 20 years, um, I was a partner in a large uh, uh, CPA firm in the Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Maryland, that those metropolitan areas. And I was in charge of our firm's um, auditing and accounting committee. And I can tell you, it's really important to beat these earnings estimates because valuations start with earnings and earnings growth. Companies come, I mean, when you try to value a company, you try to come up with estimates as to how quickly companies will grow, both top line, but especially bottom line, cash flow, that sort of thing. And so that's why we have this chart list, this uh, strong earnings chart list. Another chart list that we keep is a raised guidance chart list. Because the other thing you want to do if you want higher valuations is you want companies that are constantly seeing better things ahead. So I love these companies that beat and then raise guidance. Um, you'll see that a lot with uh, Apple and some of the other companies that have made you know these huge moves to the upside, NVIDIA. These are companies that typically um, are somewhat conservative in their forecast. They beat and then they raise their forecast again. And it's just rinse and repeat. So combining these two chart lists, a lot of times, I think you can run scans against these two chart lists and be in good shape. The, the last thing I did, and this is a scan that I ran to come up with the five charts I'm going to show you today. The other um, uh, part of the scan is I've taken the top 10 industry groups over the last three months. These are the stocks that are outperforming the S&P 500 by the most over the last three months. So we've got the 10 best industry groups, and then also um, looking for stocks within these two chart lists that we have. So you gotta be in one of these groups. That's why these are all ORs clauses, starting with automobiles down to non-ferrous metals. 
And it's a wide range. I mean, if you look at the industry groups, this is a discretionary, another discretionary, technology, energy, um, discretionary, com uh, communication services, industrials, 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 and materials. <clears throat> so you're looking at a wide range uh, throughout the entire market. And then in order to, to be on this scan, they not only have to be in one of those industry groups, but they also need to be in one of these two chart lists uh, or both, excuse me, both of these chart lists, not or. They have to be in both. They have to have raised guidance. They had to have beaten earnings, beaten revenues. These are estimates I'm talking about. And then also been part of one of these 10 groups. So I'm going to start off with applied materials. So applied materials is in the semiconductor group. Um, you can see, first of all, chart's been good. AD line, very strong. And you look at the relative strength versus the semis and you say, well, probably not one of the best. And I would agree, except that we just got great reports from LAM Research and uh, KLA Corp, both in applied material space. And they both blew away the numbers. And applied materials is getting ready to report. So they haven't been, they're still on our strong earnings chart list because last quarter they beat and they raised. This quarter, I think we're going to have another similar type report. Given what their competitors are doing, I think we're going to see applied materials come in very strong with earnings. And I look for this company to go higher from here. So I think applied materials is um, uh, one of the five of the uh, Your Daily Five this month. Next up, Delta Airlines. Now, Delta came out with its earnings. And look at this pre-earnings move to the upside. You almost see no selling. I mean, very little selling. It went straight up buy on rumor. Heading into its earnings report, it, they came out with their earnings. And since they came out, it's been a sell on news. But I want you to pay attention. First of all, the airline group has been coming down. But look at the relative strength of Delta versus the airlines. On lesser volume, it's been going down but it's been outperforming airlines. It continues to be one of the best stocks. And as it pulls back, look at the AD line, the stocks being accumulated on this weakness. You don't really see too many big red uh, filled candles. There's not much distribution taking place here. I see a stock that is poised and it may be starting to turn around here, but I think coming off the 50 day moving average, I look for Delta to uh, be really strong here. Next up, Helix Energy Solutions Group. So this is a little different, you know, moving away from technology, uh, moving away from industrials and moving into the energy space where with its last earnings report, very heavy volume, one of the biggest volume days of the last year, probably the fourth highest and gapping up above sideways consolidation. So the stock made a big move on heavy volume back on February 21st, and that set a high. Since then, we have not been able to get through that high. We went down for a few months, back up, heading into the earnings report. Great earnings report, raised guidance, gapped up through resistance, AD line strong, relative strength great. The group is picking back up again, and I think this is one of your leaders. I look for HLX to move higher. Fourth stock, Royal Caribbean Cruises. I don't know that, I mean, if you haven't been watching these cruise, cruise lines, and I know one of the things you think about is, well, it's gone up so much. You know, I don't, I don't want to get in now. It's just gone up too much. Well, it's pulled back $10, close to $10 from its recent high. Uh, it was up near 114 or so, 113, 114. Today got down to 102.70. We're testing the 20-day moving average, getting close to gap support. I mean, this one, um, I believe does have a negative divergence. I don't have a PPO on here. I think it has a slight negative divergence. So maybe we have a little bit more room to the downside, but Royal Caribbean relative to the recreational services, very, very strong, setting a new 52 week high. Again, that AD line, very strong. And the group is actually pulling back a little bit relative to the S&P 500. So all of that relative strength, we've seen a little profit taking over the last month or so. I think we're going to see this turn back up again. And here is one of your leaders. So I look for Royal Caribbean 
to continue pushing to the upside. Remember, this is a stock that got really uh, blasted to the downside throughout the pandemic. And now we're seeing these cruise lines come back. We're seeing the airlines come back. These are areas of the market I think still have some juice to the upside. My last stock today, I'm going to go back to the semiconductors. I'm going to give you a smaller one, SGH, Smart Global Holdings. I like what's going on here. This I loved what was going on into its earnings report. This is another buy on rumor. And then the news came out. We gapped up, and then we've been selling on the news. We've been consolidating. Notice as we've been pulling back, volume's been much lighter. Also, notice as we've been pulling back, the AD line is still right on the threshold of another breakout. When we look down here, we saw semiconductors flying versus the S&P 500, and we saw this stock flying versus the semiconductors. It was arguably, I mean, everybody's looking at NVIDIA and so forth. This is one of the best stocks in the semi space or was from the end of April through this earnings report at the end of June. And, and they delivered the goods and wrote, then they raised guidance. But now they've pulled back from $30. They've come back down to as low as almost 25. They're starting to turn back up. I think this is a stock that goes a lot higher. So these are my five. I Obviously, I'm not a registered investment advisor. So this is not, I'm not encouraging anyone to buy, do your own due diligence. I'm just giving you stocks that I like and the reasons why, and you can take it and go from there. Again, we're Earnings Beats. Um, I'm the chief market strategist at Earnings Beats. I would love to have you come over and join us. You can do so by checking out our Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. This is a free newsletter. Name and email address. Hit that subscribe button, get it started. And um, in terms of uh, paid service, if you want to try that for 30 days, we have a no-cost trial. Make it as easy as possible. Come on in. I think you'll love our service. All right. It was a pleasure joining you today on your daily five. Again, go to earningsbeats.com. Sign up for that free EB Digest newsletter if you haven't already. Also, be sure to check out that 30-day trial. We'd love to have you check out our paid service. Um, have a great day, everybody. Happy trading.